This week, floods are creating havoc around the world. So are droughts. But some interesting treasures are being revealed as rivers and lakes dry up. Plus, we know sleep is important. But did you know that there's an Indian sleep champion? We'll talk about the power of sleep and, as it happens, sweat. Which can be turned into electricity. And a Japanese pet lover is ensuring dogs stay chill and cats keep cool. I'm Leela Shoshanka Prickett. And I'm Lindy Prickett. And this is Newsy Paloozy. Your weekly world news pool. Let's dive on in with... The, the Big News Story of the Week. So we know it's been hot all summer, all over the Northern Hemisphere, and in some places, temperatures went off the charts. Like your home state of Texas. And here in India, you sure do attract a lot of heat, Mama. (laughs) Seriously, man. And even a few degrees hotter for longer was next door in Pakistan. We're talking hot. The city of Jacobabad was the hottest city on Earth when temperatures hit 124 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 51 degrees Celsius. Talk about sizzle. Yet now, get this... Both Texas and Pakistan are hit again. But this time by epic floods. Some parts of the Dallas-Fort Worth area got 10 to 13 inches. That's a foot of rain pouring down in one day. Meteorologists described the storm as a a one-in-a-thousand-year event. And halfway around the world in Pakistan... Well, there it was a case of an unrelenting, as in not easing up, monsoon or seasonal rain. And third of the country is underwater. And in case you didn't know, Pakistan is more than twice the size of California. So that's a lot of flooding. And yet other parts of the world are parched. Which is a fancy way of saying dry from that intense heat. Lakes and rivers are drying up, leading to some unusual discoveries. In China, people are walking up to old temples and pavilions that used to be surrounded by water. A 600-year-old Buddhist statue that was submerged for years is now visible. In the country of Serbia, dozens of German warships, sunk during World War II, are rearing their ugly heads. Not just ugly, but hazardous, too, as most of them are full of old explosives. Luckily, the drought discovery in Spain is a little more pleasant. As our Barcelona correspondents, Nina and Marky Granjena are about to explain. So, did you hear about Spain's Stonehenge? It's finally visible again. What's Spain's Stonehenge? And what do you mean by finally visible? Spain's Stonehenge, also known as the Dolmen of Guadalperal, is a monument made out of big rocks in western Spain that's still standing after thousands of years. The Dolmen? What? Dolmen. Basically, big rocks like, like giant stone surfboards sticking up out of the ground. But a thousand years ago, they didn't have cranes or machines or anything. So how did they get these huge surfboards to stand up on end? Exactly. No one knows. That's what makes it so cool. Okay, yes, totally. Go on. So back in 1926, this German archaeologist discovered the dolmens. People started doing research and learning about the history of the rocks. So, what were they used for? They looked like giant gravestones. They kind of were. People think they may have been burial markers or a solar temple. How did they end up in the water then? Well, in the 1960s, Franco the Dictator... No! So, Franco decided to turn the valley where they were located into a water reservoir. Oh man, so they were all submerged underwater? Yes, and now that we're having another super bad drought here in Spain, the water in the reservoir has dried up. And the dolmens are finally visible again. Ha, I got it. Yeah, I guess it's cool that these artifacts are there, but the drought has been super bad for farmers. I know, they should put the dolmen in a museum, and when people pay to come see them, they can give the money back to the farmers. Great idea! From From Barcelona, Barcelona, this is Nina and Marky for Newsy 
Palusi. Thanks a lot for that, you guys. This is the second story of an emerging wonder in Spain. That's right. When the drought first began in April, we reported on Spain's ghost village that had reappeared. That's episode ninety-three. In case you want to have a listen, go on. You'll find it easy enough on our website, newsypalusi dot com. That's palusi, as in a swimming pool. P o o l o o z i. I repeat, P l l l o o z i. Thank you, Robot Lila. And now, <laughs> we all know sleep is good for us. Yes, you always say. Yes, I do. But did you know there was a sleep champion of India? I did not. Is this a ploy to get me to sleep earlier? No, I'd settle for on time. You know what happens when you're really tired at the end of the day. <laughs> Maybe. And it's official. A new study reveals that insufficient sleep is linked to an increased risk of heart disease and stroke. Admittedly, that's more likely to affect adults, but you get the idea. Yes, this is important. <laughs> You're good at that, but seriously, the study presented to the European Society of Cardiology—that's the branch of medicine that deals with the heart. Right. Well, it found that nine out of ten Americans don't get good sleep at night, and the scientists predicted that if everyone slept well, seven out of ten heart diseases could be avoided. Interesting. And the sleep champion bit. All right. Well, a 26-year-old from Calcutta, India, managed to have an uninterrupted nine-hour sleep for 100 days in a row, winning the sleep champion title and five lakh rupees, or just over six thousand dollars. Okay, I could maybe oh, be persuaded to get a good sleep for that kind of. But if you don't find it as easy as Leela or the sleep champion from Calcutta to get to sleep each night, then have a listen to our podcasting friend Abby. Hello, Abby here. If you've got children and find bedtimes a struggle, I'd like to tell you about Coco Sleep, a children's story podcast designed to make bedtime a dream. Coco Sleep turns a chaotic bedtime into cozy bonding time. The stories are delivered in a pace that gently slows. Rumor has it that no one's ever heard an ending. So search Coco Sleep on your favorite podcast app and let's make bedtime a dream. That's K O K O Sleep, and I'll see you there. What's that? I'll tell you what. That's the halftime bell, which means it's time to hear what's making news around the rest of the world. Hold on tight. It's around, around the, the world, world in eighty seconds. seconds. Ooh, hold tight. Memorials are coming in from around the world for Mikhail Gorbachev. The last leader of the former Soviet Union, who died peacefully at the age of 91, the Russian is credited for bringing an end to the Cold War and setting up reforms at home. Brazil's so-called loneliest man in the world has also died, known as the Man of the Hole because he dug deep holes, some for hiding and some for trapping animals. He was the last remaining member of an indigenous group. Who had no contact with the outside world? For the past 26 years, he lived in total isolation. NASA cancels its rocket launch to the moon again, this time because of an engine problem. NASA's space launch system is the most powerful rocket ever built, and will eventually be used to send astronauts back to the moon. And French authorities are using artificial intelligence and satellite sky maps to spot patches of blue that could be swimming pools. Why? Well, you have to pay higher property tax if you have a pool in France. So many people thought they could hide their play pond, but not anymore. Over 20,000 pools have been detected, and more are expected. 
As ever, thank you so much for that whippity wappity zippity zappity rap of what's making headlines elsewhere in the world, Mama. You are most welcome. Now it's time for technology news. Technology news. Tech news. So we all know that wearables are tiny little tech gadgets that are built into something we can wear, right? Like a watch or a Fitbit that can check our heart rate. How many steps we've walked? Never mind. Tell the time, or even play music while you roller skate. Oh yeah, 'cause I knew you were trouble when you walked in. Up on me. Well, what if while you run or roller skate, you break a sweat and use the sweat to energize the wearable? Uh, excuse me. Yep. Thanks to some clever scientists in the U.S. state of Massachusetts, if you get low battery issues, no sweat. They've got you covered. Huh? Sounds like we need to head to our Boston correspondent Ari Kelly for more on this story. Take it away, Ari. Thanks, Leela. So, did you know that when water evaporates, energy is created? And believe it or not, it's the same with your skin, which is constantly moist from sweat. So why not harness that sweet evaporation energy and turn it into electricity? Well, researchers at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst have invented a biofilm that sticks to the skin like a band-aid, which can do just that. But the really cool part, or some might say gross part, is the biofilm is made of bacteria. That does the work of converting the evaporation into electricity. Just a little bit of electricity, mind you. Not like this or anything, but enough electricity to power medical sensors or small personal electronics. However, the team is going to explore larger films that can power even more sophisticated devices. Where exactly that bacteria biofilm will be placed on the body to capture maximum sweat energy? Has yet to be decided. In Boston, I'm Ari Kelly, the host of At Your Level, reporting for Newsy Palusi. Thanks a lot, Ari. Yeah, thank you. This is similar to a device invented by Nanyang Technological University in Singapore a year earlier, which uses silver flakes that clump together and generate a small electrical current, thanks to sweat. To energize wearables, and I have it on good authority that the Lucky Dip machine is staying with sweat and wearables for our final story. Step right, step, step right, right up, up, step right up. Have a go, go the Lucky Dip machine. The Lucky Dip machine. What's it going to be today? Eh? An oddball, no doubt. An oddball, no doubt. This is a story about some hot dogs. Oops. Warning: All vegetarians. No, not that kind of hot dog. I mean, a literal hot dog, like a sweaty pooch. <coughs> oh, right. That kind of makes more sense.、Uh... <laughs> so earlier we were talking about wearables, which are gadgets you can wear. Yeah, like digital watches that play music, make phone calls, track your steps, monitor your heart rate, or even keep you cool. I'm talking small fans that you wear like headphones to circulate air around your face. You know, I thought they were kind of dorky when they first came out. Until well, Heat Wave 2022, and now I'm like, bring on the wearable fans. <laughs> exactly. Well, ever thought about having them custom made for your pet? Uh, no. That's because we don't walk our cat that much. But if you're a pet lover who's constantly walking your dog or even cat, shouldn't they have some way to cool down too? I guess. Well, a Japanese clothing maker thinks so. Roll the music, Mama. The owner of a clothing brand, Rei Uzawa, has teamed up with vets to help pets keep their cool in Japan's scorching heat. Together, they've created little fans that fit into mesh netted outfits, which blows air all over the animal's body. Not surprisingly, the device, which comes in five different sizes to fit all kinds of animals, isn't super cheap, costing around seventy-four dollars. But the orders are coming in fast. How fantastic is that? <laughs> fantastic! I like it. That's totally possum, Leela. <laughs> I make that joke so many times. <laughs> I'm just following it in your footsteps. I mean, I'm following in your paws. <laughs> And 
it's time to wrap up the podcast with the, the top, top five, five facts, facts heard today. today. Fab fact number one. Pakistan is facing massive floods due to an unrelenting monsoon or seasonal rain. What is unrelenting? Not easing up. Fab fact number two. A third of Pakistan is underwater, which is a lot of flooding. What U.S. state is Pakistan twice the size of? California. Fab fact number three. And yet other parts of the world are facing droughts with huge patches of land parched, which means... Dry from intense heat. Fab fact number four. A new study presented to the European Society of Cardiology reveals that insufficient sleep is linked to an increased risk of heart disease and stroke. What is cardiology? A branch of medicine that deals with the heart. Fab fact number five. <laughs> A bacteria biofilm is developed to power wearable electronics by harnessing body sweat. That's because when any kind of water, even sweat, evaporates, what is created? Energy. And don't forget, if you want to test yourself later on, then go to the Lucky Dip page of our website, newsypalooza.com. That's P-O-O-L-O-O-Z-I. And take this quiz online in your own time. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Newsy Palooza. Did you enjoy it? Did you learn something? Do you want to discuss what you heard with your friends? Well, why don't you tell them about Newsy Palooza? Go on, think of the jokes you can make off this episode alone. Alrighty then, see you next week in the happy, splashy, giant Newsy Palooza! Oh,